The effect I'm aiming for here is a pair of interlocking torus knots. So right click and down here we've got the torus knot uh, creation button if you like. And if you click on this little button here you get the dialog and if you right click on this you can get the dialog. And we want the dialog because I'm just going to reduce the resolution to 40 to speed things up in this uh, video. But you can use other resolutions and you'll get slightly different effects. Right, the line selection tool here is needed and select one of these lines that's on the outer loop. So that line will go all the way around this shape. But before selecting that, press G so you can get all four of them around this and then press L. So we've got all of the loops that run around the outside of the shape selected. Right click now and bevel that. So we're just going to bevel that down a bit. The choice is arbitrary, so I'll say there. And then right click again and extrude and just do that normal. Uh, be a bit wary of extruding too far because the, the the surfaces will collide with one another. You need a little bit of space left between these two because I want to do a shell extrude. But before that, you need to make sure you've got your geometry graph open. And you, if you haven't, then you can go to Window and click on Geometry Graph to open that. Because if you look here, when I do the shell extrude command, you'll see shell extrude normal that it creates when I've done. And don't let them collide too much, but you can let them collide a little bit because we're going to smooth it down at the end. So. There you go, there's a bit of collision there. It creates four new bits of geometry. Just in this little control here, allows you to hide them from view. Because I want to work on this middle section. So line selection tool selects one of these lines that forms part of the ring that goes around the outside of this loop, but not the other way, this way, whatever that way is, around its circumference, I think. Oh, is that the circumference? I don't know. That line there, just select that, press G and press L, and then right click and loop cut it into separate bits and then deselect every other bit. Now if you watch the last video that I uploaded you'll recognize this step and you might begin to wonder how fiddly it's going to be to cut out all the ribs. But as it happens this bit is a fiddly a bit because there is there is a sort of solution that uh, automates the next bit of the process. Right so what we need now is to bring in two of those four new objects that we've created, loops that are opposite one another on the shape. So I'll make one of those visible. That's there on the top. I need the one that's going to fit in on the bottom to become visible now. So it's not that one and it's not that one. Inevitably, it's the last one I try. So at this point, right click and weld all these together. And you can see that they've got this weld point here. If I, uh, if I just hide that object, but leaving that bit selected, then you'll see that all the other bits have been left separate and then I can bring in the other two strips to join them and entire selection, select everything and weld. Whoops, I missed that there. Weld. Okay, right. So again, we're in this position where these points where they're welded have remained selection. Now if we use the plus key, we can extend that selection and then if we use the minus key, because the edge was the limit, it means it's just brought it to the point where we've got all the points selected that we want to keep. So if I go select an inverse selection, I've now got all the points I want to get rid of, and then I can just hit delete. And that leaves me with my shape with the, the webs in between. Right, I'll just hide that one and bring the other one back in. And you can see the points have remained selected. But if by accident, let's say you deselect those, so I press space and deselect those, there is another way to do this. Select the edge selection tool there and select the two outer edges of one of these uh, loops in that section and then use the loop command to get all the loops on the outer edge then use the vertex selection and just extend the vertexes by one by pressing plus and that means again we've got everything selected we want to keep so if you select an inverse that means we've got everything selected we want to get rid of press delete and that gets rid of it bring the other one back into view now unfortunately uh, these aren't Mobius surfaces. That was uh, what I would like to have done, but I've not figured that out yet. So these are just sort of like flat strips that interlock. But I'm going to smooth them down two or three times, so they're nice and smooth. And then select one of them so you can see that they are two separate entities. So there you go. That's uh, not taken that long. So I hope you found that interesting, that you'll experiment with this sort of process in Wing 3D and then render it in the render engine of your choice. That's the end of the video.